937 92.1 WROI and on this Wednesday morning we're going to go across the console and welcome to the studios Mr. Brian Johnson of the Community Foundation. Good morning sir. Good morning, How are I'm doing all right. It's getting a little bit slick out there. Yeah, so just fortunately- a little. Uh- had some problems, especially the further south you got. We've been talking about this this morning. I guess around Kokomo was just yeah horrendous. Well, reports I hear it's getting slick in town, so folks, I'm take, it, e- that take it easy. Yeah, that's t- that street's <laughs> a little bit <clears throat> different than it was a couple of hours yes. ago, so we'll see. So, well, hey, we've got a lot of things going on at the foundation Very good. right now, so we'll talk about a few of those. Um, one thing that we talked about last month since then we've been able to actually launch our new website um, it's still the same address nicf.org but it's updated um, more user friendly a lot more options on there um, folks can see um, a lot more things that are going on um, and also our donation page is a lot more user friendly for um, somebody who wants to make a gift online um, there's a lot more things that are searchable so if somebody's looking for a specific fund, um, makes it easier for them to find things like that too. So it's been a while yeah, since we updated. Be handy. That would be very handy. Um, it's it's an exciting time for us to be able to update that and be able to um, offer more options for folks that are um, looking for something online. So um, speaking of online, our scholarship applications are available. Um, they're on our website, nicf.org. Um, folks can click on for Fulton County students, click on the Fulton County link and find the scholarships there. Um, that process, again, is also completed completely online. The students will go on there. Um, if they haven't done an application with us before, create an account and be able to um, put all their information in. I'd encourage students the deadline for that, um, for them to apply for that is March 2nd. So there's still some time, but um, a lot of our applications require things like an essay or letters of recommendation from um, somebody in the community. So I'd encourage students to check that out because those folks will need some time to be able to get that information into us. So, um, but again, NICF.org and you can click on the um, get scholarship application page and kids can um, go through that. We have around 50 scholarships in Fulton County that support um, a really wide range of um, needs in the community. So it's exciting to see um, that process happening. So something else is coming up. Um, the annual Valentine's Day event. Ah. I know that's something we've already already got questions about. Is that happening again? And the answer is yes. This will be the 20th annual Give Your Heart to the Community Valentine's Day event. So that's a lot of um, years. That, that's a lot of years. It's it's one of those things that it's a lot of fun um, for um, folks um, to be able to send a Valentine anywhere from a song dedication on WROI the morning of Valentine's Day. Um, which this year is Wednesday, February 14th, um, all the way up to a singing telegram and long stem rows delivered out into the community. Um, What happens is donors make a donation to a fund of their choice, and then they are in turn able to select a valentine to receive um, one of those gifts. And so it'll be um, a fun way to send a Valentine to somebody you care about and also um, support something in the community that really will make an impact for years to come. So the deadline for orders is February 9th. Um, so they get those orders. Call you or they come can call to, you in the, to make those dedication they orders. They can yeah. do that. Um, there's some brochures down here at the radio station. We have some in the office. You Tell can also you everything you ever want to know. Everything you want to know about Valentine's. You can find that on our website, nicf.org. With our new website, this is the first year that somebody can actually complete a Valentine's Day order completely online with the new information that we get from the website. Um, so if you just want to make a donation online, to that, they can do that too. But if folks do have questions, want to find out more about Valentine's Day or one of the funds, or we're always looking for a few good singers to go out in the community and help us deliver. It's a lot of fun. Um, The morning of February 14th is when we deliver most of those. They can also give us a call, 224-3223, and we can get them set up for Valentine's Day. So um, really, really, it's a fun fundraiser. Um, We have folks every year that when we walk in, they say, oh, we know what's happening. We're getting our Valentine's Day song. And so folks look forward to that. So 
So those, those are some of the current events. Um, I wanted to continue our conversation that we've started the last couple of months about um, some of the things about the history of the Community Foundation. Of course, Fulton County and the Northern Indiana Community Foundation were formed in 1993, so 2018 is our... Um, 25th anniversary. So we're looking forward to um, October of 2018 um, to be able to celebrate the founding of the Community Foundation. So this year I wanted to, or this month I wanted to look at some of the things that happened um, about 1996 through 2000 with the foundation, some of the highlights. Um, Of course, that was the time where Lilly Endowment was in some of the early stages of their gift program, which is Give Indiana Funds for Tomorrow. Um, And that was a program designed to help local communities build endowment funds that could then support community needs in an ongoing basis. So um, some of the gifts that we're going to talk about were matching funds, and also some of the gifts were part of monies that Lilly donated to local communities to help um, make some projects happen. So one of the big things that happened in 96, um, Elizabeth Babcock um, actually created a scholarship through her estate. Um, Elizabeth passed away in 1973, and the scholarship was originally created with a um, bank in 1974. But then in 1996, Um, the bank agreed to transfer that scholarship to the community foundation. Um, One thing that we see happen a lot is trusts are created at at banks, and that's not necessarily administering a scholarship isn't necessarily their forte. So often they'll work with a local community foundation to help um, transfer that to the foundation, and then the foundation takes over Um, the responsibilities of distributing those scholarship funds. And that's worked very well on both ends. Um, So in 96, that the um, Elizabeth Babcock scholarship was transferred to the Community Foundation. Um, One thing that was interesting in 2009, um, of course, in 1974, I'm sure nobody had ever heard of what a dual credit class was. Um, for a high school student, where a student can take a high school class and also get college credit for it. So in, ni- in 2009, um, the Community Foundation worked with the schools to be able to revise the scholarship because the scholarship originally said graduates of Rochester High School were the ones that were eligible for the scholarship. And in 2009, we were able to revise that so that it can also help support dual credit students who are taking classes, college-level classes, while they're in high school. Um, But it's kind of neat to look at, when we look at the impact, in 96, the scholarship was transferred to the Community Foundation. Since that time, there's been over $525,000 in scholarships given out to Rochester High School graduates and also supporting the dual credit classes. So it's neat to see how um, this scholarship has had that impact. And the neat thing about that is... Those funds that were given in 96 are still here and still working to be able to give out scholarships for this year and next year and 10 years down the road, Um, just continuing to help support um, students. And it's it's not monies that go away. And so it's a continuing thing with the endowment. So it's wonderful to look at that and you say over a half a million dollars in scholarships and it's still going. So that was 96. Um, Another big thing that happened in this time frame was 1998, this playground called Manitou Mountain over in the park was a big thing in the community. Um, The community foundation granted um, about $15,000 in supporting that project, which was a portion of it, but also helped with some of the um, logistics of um, funds coming in for that. Um, That project was... I, I don't think you could say anything but a but a smashing success. In June of 98, the playground was constructed over the period of about five days. Um, 1,300 volunteers were involved in that program, and it's something that the community is still using today and um, is just kind of one of the highlights of our park. Um, so that was, that was another program that happened um, in 98. Um, something else that was a first in 1998 was the Lilly Community Scholarship 
that was first awarded. Um, Lilly Endowment, one of their focuses is education. And so what they wanted to do was help um, create um, more educational opportunities for students and communities. So they um, first offered their um, Lilly Community Scholar Award, which helps students by providing them full tuition to an Indiana college or university of their choice. Um, since 98, 37 students in Fulton County have received um, that award, and it, it's still going. It's wonderful to see how that's helped students um, obtain some educations that they wouldn't otherwise be able to afford. And then another big thing um, that happened, um, Lilly Endowment, through their gift program, they had different phases. And part of what they wanted to do with those phases was actually help communities get in the mindset of granting. So during phase three and phase four, which was during that um, 1997 through about 2000 time frame, um, they gave communities some flexibility. They said, we want you to raise so many dollars in endowment funds. We want you to give away so many dollars in grants to immediate projects, and then you're going to have some flexibility with some of the other dollars. So Fulton County made some really wise decisions um, in the fact that they always, the board of the community foundation chose to endow as much as Lilly Endowment would let them endow for community um, grants. And so what happened was there were some projects that were supported, but a lot of those dollars were put into endowment funds that are helping us grant out today. And as a result of those decisions of, of some of our early founders, um, it's helped us get to the point of where we can sit down and say, hey, we're going to have $200,000 in community grants that we're going to be able to grant out this year just because um, we had some folks that had some foresight that said, Let's endow as much of this as possible. And so that that's wonderful to see the impact today. But when we look back at some of those projects that were chosen, um, some of the early projects that were made grants to as part of Lily Phase 3 and 4 were the Garrett Ground Barn at the golf course. Folks driving into the community see a, a wonderful, welcoming um, golf course. The Kiwana Union Township Park which is in um, downtown Kiwana, has been a great benefit, a wonderful addition, some playground equipment um, used very well during the fall festival. Um, out in Lighters Ford, the Abenabi Township Community Building, they had a situation with the, the school that was there that um, the building was really unsafe and needed to be um, torn down, and they were able to, to um, tear it down and actually build a community building that's now used out in um, Lighters Ford by a number of things. Um, another big project that, that happened during that time frame was the Akron Revitalization Project. Um, a group of folks in Akron got together and said, what do we need in our community? And um, that was the start of the effort to make sure they have all the services that they need, do some revitalization downtown, some buildings, some community gathering spaces. Um, and it has really been wonderful to see how that community has come together and, and really focused on some of those needs and been successful in that project. Um, the Everett Smith building renovations at the fairgrounds um, was also one that was completed through that. Um, so total in phase three and phase four, Lilly Endowment provided $800,000 for, for current community grants um, in the community. And so some of these projects are ones that we see every day and, and use when I go to the golf course. I get to enjoy the fact that we have a nice pro shop that's um, that has the space that's needed um, and really a welcoming site for our community to come in. Um, and I've had the opportunity to benefit from all of these projects that we've mentioned as a community member. And it's wonderful to see how those things happen. But also... Um, the foresight, because not every community chose to endow as much as Fulton County did. And we're reaping the benefits of that today when we can sit down and say, hey, we have more grant dollars today because somebody early on chose to save some of these monies instead of granting them out immediately so we can benefit um, tenfold the time of what it would have been versus granting it out immediately. So, so that's some of the things that um, kind of that 
1996 through 2000 time frame when the foundation, of course, were founded in 93. So I'm still learning about how a community foundation works and what kind of impact a community foundation can have in the local community. Of course, we look back 25 years and say, yeah, this is a really great thing, but this was kind of a new and untested waters, I guess, for our community. But now, it, this just been in Fulton County, or are we talking about these, the entire these are northern... Spe- yes, these are specifically Fulton County. Okay. Um, the Northern Indiana Community Foundation, Fulton County was part of the three county association, Fulton, Miami, and Cass County at that point that started the Northern Indiana Community Foundation Um but all of this that we talked about today is specifically Fulton County um, things. But, of course, with the Three County Association, it allows us to do so much more um, in our community. And so we can actually go out and and really be interactive with organizations and needs in the community. So it's, it's wonderful to see how the communities work together to provide services for individual communities so but really an exciting time um, as the community foundation was learning about what kind of impact we could have and like i said when we look back and you say something like the babcock scholarship half a million dollars given to rochester high school students that can help them with things like dual credit classes or going to school it's it's wonderful to see that impact long term so so that's that's a little bit more of our walk through history. Next month we'll we'll continue that um, as we look towards our October um, 2018 anniversary. But just a reminder: scholarship applications are available at nicf.org. Um, students that are looking for scholarships to go to college, I encourage you to check that out. Um, Valentine's Day event. Of course, we have brochures here at the radio station, at the Community Foundation office, or those are also available online, nicf.org. Um, the deadline for those orders is February 9th. So we look forward to helping make an impact in our community through those gifts to the Valentine's Day event and also having a good day of, of spreading some Valentine's cheer for folks locally. So if folks have questions about anything that that we said today on the program, we'd love to hear from you. Of course, you can check us out again online, nicf.org, um, on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, give us a call, 224 3223, or stop by our office here at 715 Main Street. We'd love to talk to you about how the foundation may be able to help you do something good for our community. Outstanding. Again, Brian Johnson, Fulton County Community Foundation, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. As always, we thank you very kindly for your time. Thank you, Baird.